In this tutorial, we're going to go through the configuration of the Solax Modbus integration that we've installed earlier. Um, so this is a clever part. Um, it's written and developed by a man called uh, William Swan. And um, he's uh, um, taken the Modbus registers and codes out of the inverter, looked them all up, found out how to um, adjust them, write to them, and loads of other complicated stuff. And he deserves um, a lot of credit, okay? So um, that's what we're going to do, uh, uh, configure the Solax Modbus integration and please go and visit William's uh, GitHub page. Okay, there's a huge amount of information on there um, along with support and discussions. To start off with, please log on to your Home Assistant uh, instance and also if you can open the inverter settings from the Solax cloud um, or, your, or your Solax app. Configuration for this, we need to uh, first go to the settings and then we're going to uh, the integrations tab. Now at the moment we haven't actually installed the integration yet, so you're going to click add integration um, and then type in Solax um, into the box and we're interested in the Solax inverter Modbus there, so click on that and you're presented with the configuration page. So at the top it says Solar X, just leave that as it is and it'll help it work with the other things I'm going to show you later. Um, TCP Ethernet connection is correct. Now the mod bus address of the inverter may be different in your instance and I'm going to show you now um, how to check that. So on the left hand side here, um, go into the settings of your inverter and then we're going to type in 2014 for the code number to access the advanced menu. Okay, click on the advanced menu and scroll down to where it says Modbus in the menu item and click on that. So you can see it says uh, COM485 for function select, board rate 19,200 and the address is one. Okay, so whatever your address is in here, you need to add into the Modbus address of the inverter in the configuration page. All right, um, it's a Solax inverter, so I'm going to leave that, but it is compatible with others. It's compatible with GrowWatt, Solis, Sofar, um, and, and some others, even though it's a Solax integration. It initially started that way, but um, William has, has expanded it to uh, be compatible with other brands. Uh, the polling time here, this is how often you'd like it to update, and I'm going to set that to 10 seconds. Now, in your instance, you may have uh, different options available. Do you have the emergency power su um, supply enabled? Do you have a dry contact box on a Gen 4? And are your inverters working in a master or slave mode? Now, mine aren't, so I'm not going to tick any of those. And um, I'm going to click Submit. On to the next screen. Here you need the IP address of your inverter. So this is the IP address you set up when configuring the Wi-Fi dongle. Um, so it's, it's, it's the one in my case which is starting 192.168.1 and I set it to be a fixed IP address of 112, so 112. So you need to uh, have recorded that. Remember I actually said uh, record them in a settings um, document uh, to keep track of them. So put that in there now and um, leave the TCP port as 502 and the Modbus TCP um, selected there and click submit. Okay, that's all there is to it. You can you can uh, add to uh, an area if you want to. If your inverter is in the garage, you can click add new area like this and type garage. Or yours may be in the loft and you can click finish. When you finish configuring the Solax Inverter Modbus integration, um, it'll appear here in your settings integrations. Um, now this is live and polling your inverter every 10 seconds and updating all the sensors. Now the sensors are called entities in Home Assistant and you can check to see how many they are and if they're working by just clicking on the integration. So you can see it says one device, 165 entities, that's 165 different sensors and readings um, that the inverter is providing through the integration. If you click on the entities, then it shows you a list and all the names of the identities which you're going to be using when you um, set up your dashboard on Home Assistant. Now this screen doesn't provide the actual readings of those sensors. If you want to do that, just go back to the previous screen um, and you can click on here where it says one device and 
it'll show you all the readings, the live readings from the inverter in that list. Um, all these are live readings, really exciting stuff, and you're now pretty well ready to start creating the dashboard. Okay, thanks for watching. Please continue the series and of course, uh, like and subscribe and all that stuff. And um, go and buy uh, William a coffee. See you next time. Thank you very much.